One of the important things to consider when looking at chemical reactions is how much energy or how much heat is being consumed or liberated by the reaction. Another thing that we run into very, very quickly when we start talking about this is the relationship between heat and temperature. Most of the time when we're talking about a relationship between heat and temperature, we're talking about something called specific heat. Now, specific heat goes by a lot of names, but let's think about this uh, very basically. Um, when we're talking about heat or heat capacity, when we add heat to a substance, the temperature increases. When we remove heat from a substance, its temperature decreases. That seems pretty straightforward, and honestly, it is pretty straightforward, but it's not always quite as easy to see how some of these numbers are connected. But the question we really want to get to at the root of it is how much heat is associated with how much temperature change for a given substance. Now, one other little word of warning before we get too far into this. If you're doing a search for this, if you're looking around for this, you'll see a lot of different terms. You'll see specific heat, you'll see heat capacity, you might see specific heat capacity. Um, these are all very, very similar concepts. There are some very specific little parts of the definition um, that distinguish them, but really they all get down to how much heat is associated with how much temperature change. All right, let's look at a specific problem and see what we can figure out working through that. How much heat is required to heat a 756.342 gram block of copper from 16.18 degrees C to 39.67 degrees C? So in our picture down here, I've got my block of copper. It's at some initial temperature. I'm going to add heat to it and get to 39.67 degrees. In order to do that, well, we've got a change in temperature. We know how much material we're working with, but we need a heat capacity. We need a relationship between heat and temperature. So looking at specific heat values, again, depending where you look, there are a ton of different units because specific heat is a relationship between heat, temperature, and amount. And if you think about the different units that we would have for heat temperature amount, we've got heat in small C calories, big C calories, joules, kilojoules, or even BTUs, British thermal units, if we're using uh, that system. Temperature. Our temperature can be expressed in Celsius or Fahrenheit. It can also be expressed in Kelvin and Rankine um, or other temperature units. And amount, well, any way we can quantify the amount of matter that's present will work here. So we would probably think about it more in terms of grams and kilograms, but again, we might have pounds or ounces. And to make it even more fun, there's one that we can sneak in there. We can quantify a substance by the number of moles. So depending where you look, specific heat values are going to be some mishmash of these heat units, these temperature units, and these amount units. Going back to the problem, the specific heat that I found uh, most quickly happened to be in joules, grams, and degrees C. So let's go ahead and use that. One of the things about specific heat problems and heat capacity problems in general is, and I'm going to say this a bunch of times, let the units set up the problem for you. So let's take a look at this problem. Now that we have a value for our specific heat, we can use that to set up the problem. I want heat, I want energy, so let's use our heat capacity, our specific heat, with the energy unit in the numerator. I need to take into account the amount of substance, in this case grams, so let's multiply by 756.342 grams. That unit goes away. Now I still have degrees C, so let's take into account the temperature change. And remember, it's a change in temperature. So 39.67 degrees C minus 16.18 degrees C. Those units cancel nicely as well. And I'm left with 6,840.092328 joules. I hope every one of you screamed when you saw that because 
that is a ridiculous number because it has way too many sig figs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten significant figures. That's ridiculous. So let's make sure we round that appropriately. Looking back at our inputs, my input is going to be limited by what I have here. So the specific heat I was able to find is only three significant figures of information. The other thing that sometimes can limit us is the temperature, but if I do this subtraction, I'll have, what, 23 something. So I've got four sig figs here. I've got six sig figs here, only three. I better round this to three. This is also an interesting case because if I just round this to three sig figs, six, eight, four, this could be a little ambiguous. So is that zero significant or not? The way I have it written, no, it's not, but it could be confusing. So if we want to be a little bit clearer about that, we can use scientific notation and call this 6.84 times 10 to the third joules. There it becomes really obvious that there are only one, two, three sig figs. Or for this specific one, I could just use kilojoules instead of joules and call this 6.84 kilojoules. What do you have to watch out for when you're looking at specific heat or heat capacity types problems? Well, again, use the units to set up the problem because the units are going to change depending on your source. So just think about those units and use them to set up the problem. The other thing that I see coming up as a, as a little uh, hurdle is the temperature that we're talking about here is a change in temperature. Heat capacity is a temperature change phenomenon. If the temperature is not changing, then we don't have a specific heat problem. We don't have a heat capacity problem. We've got some other type of problem. And as we saw in our example, the value that we find for specific heat will often limit your sig figs. So make sure you're checking your sig figs appropriately and rounding where you need to be and if possible find a specific heat with as many sig figs as you can a lot of times you'll find those with only one or maybe two sig figs try to find one that's got at least three or four to give you a little bit a um, little bit more precise result and finally this is something that comes up with a lot of thermodynamics thermodynamics thermo is heat dynamics is motion so anytime we're moving heat around the sign of our mathematical result tells us the direction of the heat flow. But we can also think about heat flow in terms of words. Is heat flowing from the object or to the object? Well, from and to correspond to mathematical signs, depending how we want to think about it. Is energy, is heat being absorbed or is it being liberated? So make sure you're reading very carefully and thinking about what those uh, what those words and the signs all mean together. All right, these are problems that need a little bit of practice and a little bit of experience. So go out there and do about a hundred more and everything will start to sink in and make a little bit more sense. Good luck. Mm -hmm.